Hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Marco. This is Mike. We're both from uh, Solana Mobile. We're here to chat about uh, Seeker, Solana Mobile, building for our app store, and you know, getting ready for Seeker launch, getting your mobile app ready. <laughs> so yeah, let's jump right in. Okay. Um, yeah, quick intro about myself. My name is Mike. I'm the developer advocate for Solana Mobile. So I do like developer SDKs and education. Um, Marco, mobile engineer. Yeah, I'm a mobile engineer at Solana Mobile. So I work on our Solana, Solana Mobile stack and all of our open source SDKs, stuff like that. Yeah, and this presentation is kind of going to go over how to build for the Solana Dapp Store. It's going to explain what Solana Mobile is, um, what we're trying to do, what is the Dapp Store, and why you as a builder should be paying attention to mobile. Okay. So quick agenda, we're going to talk about why mobile. Um, then we're going to go over to Solana Mobile Stack, which is kind of like a set of developer tools and SDKs we have. Um, we're going to zoom in, talk about development tooling. And we're also going to mention um, the ongoing hackathon for Coliseum, where we're sponsoring a mobile track with a $25,000 uh, USDC prize. And two takeaways I want you all to kind of remember from this presentation. First is that the Solana Dapp Store is a perfect distribution platform for crypto mobile apps. And the second takeaway is that the time to start building for the Dapp Store is now, um, before we launch the Seeker Phone, which is kind of set to launch in summer 2025. Um, yeah. OK. So first section is why mobile? Why should we care about mobile? So kind of one of our goals at Solana Mobile is to bring crypto to the masses through mobile adoption. And I think it's pretty obvious at this point that mobile is a really important platform to target. If we just look at the data, there's like 7 billion smartphone users in the world today. Um, I think there was like 2.1 billion um, smartphones sold just in like 2016. And it's in a lot of countries people don't even have computers and they just mainly use their mobile phones to interact with the world. So I think we all agree that mobile is really important and it's really important for crypto. But then that brings us to the question, why hasn't mobile kind of broken through on crypto yet? And what is holding it back? So to kind of understand that, let's look at the current mobile experience in Web3. So when a user wants to use crypto on their phone, what do they do today? Well, what they do is they open up their phone, they usually go into their wallet app, and then they type in the URL of their favorite dApp into the wallet's in-app browser. And what that really means is like, mobile users for crypto are just experiencing a desktop screen squished down to a mobile screen. And they're missing a lot of the native features that make the mobile platform unique. Things like, you know, camera, um, GPS, uh, taking advantage of the hardware sensors, all these things that a native mobile app can do, but you can't necessarily do inside a web view of a wallet. And there's a reason why the world is like that for mobile today. These are the two issues I see with mobile adoption. Um, so the first is there's no reliable distribution platform for native mobile apps. The Apple and Google App stores are notorious for being hostile to crypto apps. As a developer, you can't really spend a lot of time and resources building an app and then get to the end of the stage with your app review and it's only get rejected. Um, so there's, no, there's a lot of ambiguity on the current distribution platforms. And second is user experience. Users don't really have a way to connect their app to wallet apps for signing. Um, so that's why they have to go through roundabout methods like using a wallet's in-app browser and then they can get signing there or using complicated plugins. And these are exactly the problems we're trying to solve with the Solana mobile stack. Solana mobile stack is a set of kind of hardware and software solutions um, that aim to address all the problems I talked about before. So kind of the three things I want to talk about in the Solana mobile stack. First, we're going to talk about what is the Solana Dapp Store um, and how does it solve that problem of distribution. Then we're going to talk about mobile wallet adapter and how that solves the problem of 
um, getting that native wallet signing within your app. And then we're going to talk about Seeker and Seed Vault Wallet, which is our upcoming um, mobile phone that's uh, set to release summer 2025. And Seed Vault Wallet will be the wallet app that ships with every Seeker device. And that will kind of tie everything together. OK, so Solana Dapp Store. Um, Solana Dapp Store is a crypto-friendly app store. And what makes it unique is the fact that it has a crypto-friendly publisher policy. So kind of what I was saying before, builders can invest time and resources building a mobile app and not have to worry about their app getting rejected in the Solana Dapp Store. They can build with no ambiguity and be confident that their app will be published on um, our Dapp Store. Um, it's also curated content, so we do an app review for every app. Um, the App Store has app categories, it has uh, ratings and reviews, um, so it's, you get all the niceties that traditional app stores also have. And it's actually live today on our first phone, which is the Saga, released in 2023. Um, there's about 18,000 of them out in the wild, so there's like 18,000 users right now using the App Store. In um, when we release Seeker, we'll have 150,000 crypto-friendly users ready to use the Dapp Store. Um, and I kind of want to highlight that these users, they've spent 500 USDC on a crypto phone. So these are hardcore crypto-native users that um, are familiar with crypto UX. Uh, as a developer, you don't really need to worry about teaching them what a wallet is um, and things like that. Take yeah, I can jump in here. So uh, Mobile Wallet Adapter is an open source protocol that we developed a few years back. Uh, it's a way for connecting dApps and wallets on mobile devices. Um, so this enables true self-custody with your mobile device, right? You don't need a separate hardware wallet. Uh, you can do everything right on your phone. You can use the security of the operating system that you have right there at your fingertips. Um, so we provide two SDKs around this. As I mentioned, everything's open source. Um, we provide some tooling that we have. Of course, anybody can build on top of this if they wanted to. So there's kind of two sides to this. We have a DAP SDK as well as a wallet SDK. Obviously, one's for DAPs, one's for wallets. Um, so all of the major wallets on Solana have adopted this, like Phantom and Soulflare. Um, and virtually every DAP on our DAP store, as well as most web DAPs, have it implemented our SDK to work with Mobile Wallet Adapter. Yeah, and up next, we have like a demo of what MWA looks like. Yeah, so this is kind of a proof of concept demo. Uh, but basically just showing you can have an app here on your phone. This, in this case, we have a little kind of fun NFT minting app. And uh, we're connecting with a wallet that runs right on our phone. You can see it just kind of slides up from the bottom. So the goal here is that we want to create a very native experience on the phone, something that feels like it's tightly integrated with the operating system. Um, so really kind of shooting for that Google Pay, sort of Apple Pay experience here. And so as I said, this works with really any wallet can adopt this. Uh, major wallets already have, and any dApp can kind of tap into this system to access these wallets. So this is really nice for dApps, right? They don't have to implement their own self-custody solution. They don't have to pay for any kind of, you know, wallet abstraction uh, service. This is a free and open source protocol that anyone can use, and uh, there's already wallets out there today that are compatible with it. Yeah, for yeah. Um. And yeah, like we were saying, um, there's a wallet side and a dApp side. So Seed Vault Wallet is the wallet app that we're building with Soulflare, and it will be on every Seeker device. Um, so every Seeker user will create a wallet as part of onboarding. And I want to highlight that as a developer, this is actually really powerful and really convenient for you. Why is it convenient? Because as a developer, you can assume that every user on the dApp store is already onboarded with a wallet. So you can just use mobile wallet adapter, and you can get that native signing from your dApp to the Seed Vault wallet um, for free. You don't need to use things like Privy or like Web3 Auth. You can just use mobile wallet adapter, and it'll work for free right out the gate. Yeah, and from the user side, this is really convenient for them when this is part of the sort of setup flow when you get the phone. Uh, you know, when you're setting up your Google account and your phone number, things like that, your Wi-Fi. Uh, you'll also be asked to set up your seed vault. So whether you want to import your existing seed phrase or create a new one, that kind of all happens in a nice, easy flow right when you set up the phone, right? So it's nice and easy for users. Uh, this is backed by the secure element that's built into the phone. 
So they don't have to be worrying about trusting their seed phrase with all these different wallet apps, you know, importing it on multiple places uh, and opening up multiple attack vectors for your seed phrase, right? This all is stored on the secure element and wallets use our API to tap into that to securely sign transactions. So it's great for users. And again, as Mike mentioned, uh, it's convenient for developers that users already have access to all of this and developers don't need to worry about it themselves. Yep, I just wanna hold in like, as an app developer, you shouldn't have to worry about building a wallet. You shouldn't have to worry about building a wallet into your app. Um, and MWA just lets you lean on a wallet app to do wallet stuff and you can focus on building your app. Okay, so we kind of talked about the stack from a high level. Now I want to zoom in and talk about how you can start developing now um, and kind of what tools and resources are available. Okay, so kind of extra motivation to start building. Um, there's an ongoing hackathon um, hosted by Coliseum. It's called the Breakout Hackathon. And Solana Mobile were sponsoring a mobile award, um, which is kind of like a side award that you do in addition to the main tracks. And the criteria is the best submission to the Solana Dapp Store. Um, it started this month, I believe, and submissions are due May 16th, so you still have ample time. Um, and I want to highlight that you don't need a Solana mobile device. You don't need like a Seeker or a Saga to actually develop for the Dapp Store, um, to build and test for the Dapp Store. It's just Android development. So you can use any Android device. Um, you don't even need an Android device. You could use like Google to set up uh, an emulator and you could just test that on your computer. Yeah, Google provides a nice little Android emulator that you can run on any, you know, MacBook or Windows machine. Um, so if you don't have an Android device, you can just download that. It comes with Android Studio. Set it up right on your phone and simulate an Android device so you can start developing at any time. And yeah, um, eligibility. Uh, it has to be an Android app, right? The Dapp Store, Seeker, they're Android phones. Um, it has to be published onto the Dapp Store. Okay, so development frameworks. Um, this is kind of a question you're gonna have to answer when you're starting to build your app. Like, what development framework do I choose? And I think my answer is that at the end of the day, it's Android development, and you should just pick the stack that you move the fastest in and works best for your use case. That being said, we have two official um, languages and uh, frameworks that we support, um, React Native and Kotlin. And by official, uh, that means we have development documentation, we have resources like sample apps, um, and we have official SDKs for a mobile wallet adapter uh, in these two uh, programming languages and platforms. Um, I wanna shout out React Native in particular. If you're a web developer and someone kind of experienced with like the Solana web libraries, I would definitely recommend React Native because it's just JavaScript, so you can reuse a lot of the nice Solana web libraries that you're used to, like Web3.js, um, Anchors, TypeScript library, and like Metaplex's JavaScript libraries, they all work on React Native. And for Kotlin, you know, that's like the, the native uh, Android language. And so obviously, if you're doing native Android development, that makes the most sense. But it's also useful if you want to wrap that into, for example, like Tari and develop in Rust. Uh, you can use our SDKs to wrap those into other kind of multi-platform languages and stuff like that. And we also have a couple of community SDKs, uh, Flutter, Unity, and Unreal. These are maintained by ecosystem and like third-party teams. Um, and yeah, they're great. Check them out if you're interested. Yeah, we've had some really great teams uh, build some tooling on top of our stuff. As you mentioned, everything we have is open source. So we love seeing when the community sort of steps up and provides additional tooling on top of what we provide. And yeah, just a quick note about development setup. Like I said before, you don't need um, a Seeker or a Saga to actually start building. You can use any Android device. Um, so you can start building today if you want to. And yeah, testing and building your app, you can do that on any Android device and you could expect it to behave pretty much identically on a Seeker or Saga. I just want to highlight here that, um, you know, as Mike mentioned earlier, we've got about 150,000 pre-orders for our new phone that should be coming out here in just a few months. Uh, and we encourage people, if you want to launch an app on that, to do it today, right? You want to get out there, get some feedback, iron out any bugs, so that when people get these devices in their hand on day one, your app is polished, it's ready to go, it's on the Dapp Store. Uh, you know, rather than waiting till sort of after that initial curve, we think that 
there's going to be a lot of hype right when this phone launches, right? So we encourage people to try to be a part of that and get, get working today. Yep. And here on the screen is just some um, resources for builders. So on the left, we have the developer docs. Um, I'll actually do a preview of that after this. Um, basically, it's our doc site that has everything I just talked about, about our frameworks, our SDKs. Um, and yeah, it's a great place to start. It also has kind of instructions on how to publish onto our Dapp Store. There's a whole step-by-step -step tutorial that you can find there um, that goes through the publishing process. Um, and on the right, we have uh, our Discord. So this is like the Solana Mobile Discord. And we have um, a section, a channel for developers. And I would say it's really um, a great place to start asking if you have questions or you're just interested in publishing, definitely just join the Discord and start typing in that developer channel. Um, we're pretty much on it like every day, so we're super responsive and um, pretty eager to engage with anyone who's interested in building an app. Yeah, it's a really great community. There's a ton of builders in there. It's a great place to ask questions. We've seen people, you know, find other teammates and sort of form teams for hackathons and things. So it's just a really great, great place to connect with other mobile builders. Yeah, thanks okay. so much, Shell. Looks like we're running a little bit, a little bit short for questions here, uh, but we have a booth right at the kind of bottom of the escalator over here. We've got uh, secret devices that we can show off. You can come hold the phone, see in your hand, and of course, ask us any questions about mobile development, about the phone itself, uh, anything you have. Thanks so much. Thank you.